Good evening, I'm AJ Legault. You're watching Unfit to Breed, an eight news special report. It's difficult to believe, but in the name of creating a master race, thousands of Virginia citizens were sterilized without their consent, deemed unfit to breed. The Commonwealth officially apologized for the practice about 10 years ago, but now victims are crying out saying that's not enough. I love my country, I fought for it, and I still fight for it again. 85-year-old Lewis Reynolds can't hide his patriotism. He wears it like a badge. I thank the good Lord that served my country, and I thank him for letting me live as long as I have. As a Marine sergeant, he fought in Korea and Vietnam. He retired after 30 years in uniform. A proud career for a man Virginia deemed a defective and forcibly sterilized for the good of society. I see people walking around here with their kids and all, and sometimes I cry because I ain't got none. People don't understand my feelings. To understand what happened to Reynolds and thousands of others, you need to look back to 1924. The infamous Virginia Eugenical Sterilization Act is passed. It was based on the now discredited science of eugenics. The 1920s through the 50s were the heyday of the eugenics movement in the U.S. The stated goal to rid society of those considered defective, whose offspring might burden society, those with unfit human traits. These are individuals who were sterilized against their will for nothing. They didn't do anything wrong. Uh, it was simply because they were poor and on the welfare dime, if you will. Virginia was second to only California in the number of operations performed. These state records show from 1924 through 79, Virginia robbed 7,259 people of the right to have children. This medical form shows what Virginia political leaders at the time deemed reason enough to be denied the right to have children, being insane, idiotic, an imbecile, feeble-minded, or epileptic. Virginia's sterilization law was the model many other states followed after it was upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court in the landmark case Buck v. Bell in 1927. Virginia wanted to sterilize rape victim Carrie Buck because she was considered sexually promiscuous after becoming an unwed mother at the age of 17. Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, writing for the majority, said of the decision, it's better for all the world if instead of waiting to execute degenerate offspring for crime or to let them starve for their imbecility, society can prevent those who are manifestly unfit from continuing their kind. Three generations of imbeciles are enough. Adolf Hitler took notice, and Virginia's eugenics model was adopted when the Third Reich came to power. We, we tend to think that it was Germany's idea, Hitler's idea. It started here you know, in, in Virginia, and in fact, Germany during the Nuremberg trials cited Buck versus Bell as their defense. Back to Lewis Reynolds. This is Bill, and I was in. I was him after I was operated on. recently took us along on an emotional journey. I don't even want to think about it sometimes, I'll be honest with you. To the scene of the place where his life was changed forever. I don't know why they took my wife away from me to have children. Reynolds was just 13 when his father sent him to what was then known as the Lynchburg Colony for Epileptics and the Feeble-Minded. He'd been hit in the head with a rock and was having seizures. You'd just come here with your parents hoping that you'd get better from having the seizures. Yeah. Get better. But doctors at the colony diagnosed him as epileptic and sterilized him. And they thought you had epilepsy. Yeah, but I didn't. Turns out Reynolds' seizures were just his brain's way of recovering. I had a 47 years marriage with this lady. And she was real good to me. He'd go on to get married, serve his country, and live a, by all counts, exemplary life. These people here operate on me for no reason whatsoever. They didn't have to operate on me. The Lynchburg Colony, now known as the Central Virginia Training Center, was ground zero for Virginia's sterilization program.
compulsory surgeries were also performed at state hospitals in Petersburg, Williamsburg, Stanton, and Marion. Reynolds' medical records from the colony describe him as quiet, friendly, and fairly intelligent. But they go on to say sterilization is indicated as it will take a big burden off him in the future. They list all these positive attributes, and then they tell you in that paperwork that you needed to be sterilized to relieve you of a burden later in life. Does that make any sense to you? Well, I don't think it made any sense to me, but that's what they done to me. Not just to Reynolds. I was sterilized when I was 18 years old. But to nearly 8,000 others between the years 1924 and 1979. This happened to both you and your sister. Yeah, all of us. I had four sisters. All of us was done. When we come back, the push to compensate the victims of Virginia's effort to create a master race. Stay with us. Welcome back to Unfit to Breed, an eight news special report. Victims of Virginia's forced sterilization policies are now asking for the state to compensate for stealing away their right to have children. In the name of creating a super race, Virginia sterilized nearly 8,000 so-called defectives. I don't know who signed the papers for us to get sterilized. The state set up bogus hearings with phony advocates for the patients to authorize the operations. I get right there. Lewis Reynolds didn't even know he had an advocate until traveling with us to the Amherst County Courthouse and poring over old records. Because I was only 13. And I didn't understand what was going on. The victims were told they needed an operation for their health, often being threatened that they couldn't go home unless they had one. They told me I had to be sterilized. And no, uh, they, well, I cried and got upset, you know. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to have it done. I didn't want to have it done. Anna Seal was sterilized August 2nd, 1967. I, I cried when I got sterilized. Couldn't have no kids. And uh, I love kids myself, but I couldn't have none. Now, these victims, silenced by shame for so long, are crying out. And I can't have crying because I can't have no crew. Okay. Asking for the state to compensate in a symbolic gesture for what it took away. They've never been compensated for what the state has taken away, not only their life, I mean their liberty, but their posterity, their children. In 2002, then Governor Mark Warner officially apologized for the selective breeding policies, but not one dime has ever been paid in reparations. The effort to compensate the living victims of the Commonwealth's quest for a master race has created an unlikely political pairing in the House of Delegates. Liberal Democrat Patrick Hope and conservative Republican Bob Marshall. When Delegate Marshall and I agree on anything, people ought to take notice. This is a nonpartisan issue. Or so you'd think. While most Democrats seem to be behind the effort, a number of GOP lawmakers are balking, like causing Delegate Marshall to call out on the carpet his own party. The biggest ob objections down here are coming from the Republicans, and some of them wonder why this party looks to be callous and indifferent to human concerns. Well, because that's how they're acting. Under the bill proposed by delegates Marshall and Hope, each of the victims would receive $50,000 out of state surplus funds. That means if the state doesn't have any leftover money after all its other expenses are met, the victims don't get paid. It simply asks for some, if a surplus is recognized, that we earmark a portion of this to pay off this debt. It's a debt that no amount of money can truly repay for those who like this retired Marine are now all alone in this world. They took a lot away from you here. Yes, sir. But my imagination, I think they did. Took my right away having a family and have children and grandchildren where they can watch that for me when I got older. This story does not have a happy ending for the victims. On Thursday, the House of Delegates killed the bill to compensate these sterilization victims. It's a move supporters are calling callous and dismissive of the irreparable harm Virginia's law caused. Have a good night.